there is something about the miracle at Cana that appeals to many of us in a rather strong and strange way. Why did Jesus choose a wedding feast as the place for his first miracle? And why did he change water into wine at that feast? It seems like such an unlikely choice for his first miracle. Why not perform, say, a raising from the dead or the cure of a leper as a first miracle, surely that would have caught the attention of the people in a more dramatic way. This miracle has been talked about in many different ways over many hundreds of years. And there is so much symbolism in the changing of water into wine that this miracle can be used to think about the many different situations in our lives. And this evening, I would like to, to reflect on this miracle in relationship to something that we experience every day. And that something is pleasure. Pleasure. Whatever, whatever else was accomplished by this miracle, it is undeniable that it caused a great deal of pleasure first to the married couple, then to the wedding guests. In fact, throughout our lives, God draws us to authentic pleasure. And that is why there is pleasure in friendship, love, families, pleasure in eating, and sharing with others all the good things of this earth. Pleasure in being in the woods or on the water. Pleasure in worship, in the music, and the silence. And these are all authentic pleasures. But of course, there are also inauthentic pleasures. These are pleasures that lead us, do not lead us to God. In fact, they lead us away from God and from others. And some of these inauthentic pleasures are like hoarding of possessions, pornography, gluttony, violence, just to name a few. In fact, one of the great sins is pleasure without conscience. This kind of pleasure is pleasure at the expense of another person. Someone else suffers because of what I want to enjoy. And that is why it is so important for us to distinguish between authentic and inauthentic pleasures and practice the authentic pleasures even more in our lives. Pleasure really plays such a large part of our lives. Every single day, we are pushed and pulled by pleasure. And that is why we must never try to turn away from all God-given pleasures, nor must we give ourselves up without any distinctions to 
all the pleasures. Because pleasure is not something that God is asking us to avoid. No. Rather, it is God's way of drawing us forward in life. Surely, this does not mean that we will never have to experience hardship and pain, say, in our marriages, friendships, or jobs. But if, in some areas of our lives, our main experience is of pain and hardship, then it is usually pointing to some problem in that area. And that pain is calling us to look more closely at, for example, how we are living a certain relationship or doing a certain type of work. Again, we have to be very careful because we can get ourselves fixated on something that seems to take away our pain for a while, something that gives us pleasure. But what really happens in the long run is the pleasure often turns into pain. Alcoholic or drug addicts knows all about this. Even workaholic. The workaholic, for example, thinks that he or she will get more possessions, status, self-worth and whatnot by their addiction to their work. But all the while, they are really deadening their true capacity to experience all God-given pleasures of this life. So if we look at today's miracle in the light of pleasure, this miracle reminds us that heaven is filled with pleasures of all kinds. All the authentic pleasures here on earth is just a small foretaste of what God has in stock for us. So let us today be thankful for all the good things, for all the, the authentic pleasures that God has given to us to draw us closer to him and to one another in love.